Okay, we're gonna start uh, with uh, linear inequalities. Actually, these are three topics. We got linear inequalities, absolute value equations, and then absolute value inequalities. So there's three things we're gonna try to cover in this one video. Um, the rules for linear inequalities are the same as the rules for equations. But there's one big exception, except when we multiply or divide by a negative number, we have to reverse the direction of the inequality. We cannot keep the inequality the way it is. It has to be reversed. So again, if you know how to solve regular linear equations, for the most part, you are okay, except you gotta keep that in mind because that will mess up the whole thing. And when I'm giving tests and, and quizzes and assessments, um, that's what I'm, one of the things I'm gonna be checking for, whether we remember to reverse the direction of the inequality if we multiply or divide by a negative number. So please be always uh, watchful of that. So let, we're gonna show how uh, we can come up with uh, solutions. Actually, they're quite straightforward. Uh, let's start with one example. Let's solve this inequality. Uh, three plus X is less than three uh, X plus seven. Okay. So we try to isolate the X. So the easiest, well, not necessarily the easiest, but the thing that I, I think of is to subtract X from both sides of the inequality. So take away X from here, X from there. There's a three left over, and that is less than two X. Because when we subtract X, there's no X over here. When we subtract X from three X, we end up with two X. Uh, then we move the seven over here. Now, in, that is an, uh, um, a, we, we don't mean to move. What we mean to say is we're gonna subtract seven from both sides of the equation. However, um, we, we, we sometimes just say that we move it, but in reality, we're actually subtracting the seven from both sides of the equation. When we do that, we end up with negative four. So three minus seven is negative four. That is less than two X. And finally, we divide by two. So when we divide by two, negative four divided by two, will give us negative two is less than x. Or the other way to say it is that x has to be greater than negative two. Invariably, I'm gonna request students to write your, their answers using interval notation. This notation is inequality notation, but we want interval notation. So uh, we want all the numbers that are greater than negative two, and in interval notation, we start with negative two, excluding negative two, and then we don't end on the right. So this is the solution we're gonna ask for, and this is interval notation, as opposed to inequality notation. And that's it, example two. Four X plus one, is less than or equal to two X minus one. Okay, so again, subtract two X from both sides of the equation. So there is no more X anymore. Um, and then let's move the one to the other side of the equation. Again, that is a little bit of abuse of the language. We are not moving, we are subtracting one from both sides of the equation. Uh, it does look like we're moving it, but we're subtracting. Um, so 2x, because there's no more one anymore since we're subtracting it away. Um, and that is gonna be less than or equal to negative two. Again, we divide by positive two. Uh, back here, we did divide by positive two as well. And then um, x is uh, simply less than or equal to negative one. But now, the question is how do we convert that into interval notation? Well, we want all the numbers that are to the left. 
So less than or equal means to the left then or on negative one, on negative one. So, so if negative one is there, we could take negative one and all the numbers to the left of it. Yep. So infinities always use round parentheses. Never, ever, ever, never use square brackets. Never. Same thing here. We never, ever put square brackets. And the reason why we have here a square bracket is because we are including the negative one as part of the solution. X can actually reach negative one. Here, X cannot reach negative two. It has to be strictly greater. So in mathematics, one point, one little itty bitty point makes a difference. Here we're saying that X is greater than two without the two, actually greater than negative two. Uh, here we're saying that X is less than negative one, with negative one, and this is without. So the end point counts the other, in the other one, it doesn't. Um, let me just give you a quick, quick analogy. Yeah, yeah, so uh, on whether you, you, you want something to count versus something that doesn't count. Uh, uh, let's, let's compare tennis, the game of tennis versus football. So this has nothing to do with example, it's just an, an analogy. I just thought of this um, right now. Okay, so if you, if you, if the ball or if you step on the line, you know, on the perimeter of the football field, if you're a player and you step on the line, are you in or are you still, are you still in or are you out? And uh, you may or may not know that. A lot of people like football, so I'm guessing a lot of people know that if you step on the white, on the, on the line is usually white, um, on the field, on the borderline, then you are outside. If the ball hits the, out, the outside, the, the, actually the line. So what is the outside? The line is where the outside starts. So line is out. Yeah, so the line is not part of the boundary. So in that case, you know, if, if line was a number, you know, the line, then we would put L, let's just put L. That means that what is inside excludes the line. All right. In tennis, and please uh, make, a, make a comment on, on the video if, if I'm incorrect, but I believe in tennis, if the ball hits the line, the, the ball is in the court. So, it's probably best for the opponent to to get the ball right on the line because then we may think it is outside, but actually it is in. So line counts as in, while line does not count as in. Perhaps this is a very, very silly, anal I mean, kind of an idea, an analogy, but I'm trying to drive the point that in, means take the square, you know, use the square for in, the square bracket, um, out, use the round parenthesis. Yep, and in different games, the line could be in and, or the line could be out. Yep. yep. So that, that varies from, from sport to sport. And that is just one analogy. I don't know, I don't know if it's so clear, but to be honest, I don't know about basketball. If the ball is bouncing and then all of a sudden it, it hits, it bounces right on the line, is it in or out? And I don't know the, I honestly don't know the answer to that. Um, another example, X plus two over three, less than X minus one over four. All right. Um, we are allowed to multiply by numbers. This is very much like a regular equation. We do the cross product. So multiply this with this. As long as, we, so when we are doing that, we gotta be aware though that we're multiplying by four, which is positive, and we're multiplying by three, which is also positive. So multiply and we end up with uh, four. Let's do that in two steps. X plus two less than three, times x minus one. So we're multiplying by, by four, 
over here by four over here. And we're also multiplying by three uh, and the three cancels and the three doesn't cancel there. Distribute, so we have four X plus eight less than three X minus three. Subtract three X from both sides the, of the inequality. So we have a single X is less than opposite of three and then subtract eight from both sides of the equation. X has to be less than negative 11. In interval notation, so X has to be to the left, not because it is on the left on this inequality, uh, li physically, literally, it is not because of that, because the symbol says that X has to be to the left. So this symbol means to the left of on the number line, less than means to the left. And because we have no equal, that means that, the, okay, so this is like football. The number has to be out. So uh, the negative 11 is out, so, as in football, and we have everything to the left of negative 11, but the negative 11 doesn't count. It's like the bound, it is like the boundary. The boundary is negative 11, it does not count. Four. Ah, five minus X is greater than or equal to 10. Okay, there's actually a couple different ways to do this. Let's add the five because there's no other X to combine. So let's rather subtract five from both sides of the equation. So we're gonna do it one way and then we're gonna do it in a different way and we should end up with the same solution. So if we subtract five from both sides of the equation, we end up with negative X is greater than or equal to, well, 10 minus five is five. Okay, so then we multiply by negative one to get rid of the negative X, or you can divide by negative one, same thing. So we're gonna multiply by negative one, negative one times negative X is just the X, Negative one times five is negative five. But here is where we have to be very, very careful. The direction of the inequality has to go the other way. It has to reverse. That's what I mean with the rule here. Yeah, yeah. Except that when we multiply or divide by a negative number, we have to reverse direction of inequality. Yeah. And that's exactly what we mean. So X has to be to the left. Now this symbol means to the left or smaller than means to the left on the number line. So that means that we're gonna go all the way to the left. And on the left, if you keep going forever to the left, uh, the way we describe that is by putting a negative infinity on the left. So we have negative infinity. Now the equal symbol means we're playing tennis. That means that the negative five has to be in. As in tennis, line is in. In football, line is out. All right, that's one way to go about this. The other way is to say, okay, let's add X to both sides of the equation. Rather, sometimes I will, I will say equation um, inadvertently, but this is not an equation. An equation has an equal in it. This is an inequality. So we add X to both sides of the inequality and we keep the five on the left, greater than or equal to, we're gonna add X so that the X goes away here, but then it's gonna show up on the other side, plus 10, we keep the 10. Then we can subtract the 10 from both sides of the equation. Again, I, can, I said equation on both sides of the inequality. So five minus 10, is negative 10 greater than or equal to X. Okay, so now we have the X without any negative or anything like that. Oh, I did this wrong. Five minus 10 is negative five, not negative 10. All right, negative five. Okay, now let's read this correctly. This says that X 
is less than, see, the, the pointy part of this symbol means that that is less than, and the opening means that that is greater than the other one. So there are two ways to read this. X is less than or equal to negative five, or negative five is greater than or equal to X. You know, and it's, in, it's the same thing. It's like, did I win or did you lose? Same thing. <laughs> um, um, so, so we are saying the same thing just in two different ways. Did I win or did you lose? So is negative five is greater than X or X is less than negative five with the equal, of course. So either way, X is to the left. So that's what, that is the thing we got to keep in mind. So uh, think of uh, the number line, keep it in the back of your mind. And the X has to be to the left of negative five. So whatever negative five is, keep it. Uh, we are playing tennis. So the equal means tennis because ball is in, the number is in, the boundary is in. And then the negative infinity is on the left. Yep. So that's the way we, and we obtain, of course, the same answer. We just went about finding the answer differently. Here, um, because we kept the X where it is, it kept the negative, so eventually we have to multiply by negative, and that reverses the direction of the inequality. Here, we move the x. By doing that, the x lost its negative without having to multiply. That is very important. We, we lost the negative without multiplying. What we did was we added x, and that is a gigantic difference in inequalities. So that is okay. We don't have to change the direction of the inequality exclusively and only when we multiply, uh, when we multiply or divide by a negative number. That's, those are the only two times when we multiply or divide by a negative number when we reverse the direction of the inequality. Oh, there's, there's one more time. If we flip the whole thing around, then that's, you know, if we put the five on the other side and we reverse inequality and we put the negative X on the other side, yeah, that's, that's okay too. So I guess there's a, a third way, but I'm keeping things the way they are. I'm trying not to do that um, in, in, in these problems. Five. One minus two X is less than 11. Similar problem. Okay. I'm just going to keep the X where it is so I can practice multiplying or dividing by negative two. So we're going to subtract one from both sides of the equation. Negative two X is less than 10. We're subtracting one. And that means that, okay, so now we're going to divide by negative two. Divide by negative two. So when we divide by negative two, X remains as is. And 10 divided by negative two is negative five. Okay, but we're dividing by a negative number. So the rule applies. We have to reverse instead of the, the, this little cusp pointing to the left, now it is gonna point to the right. Okay, there's no equal. So now we're playing football. The five is not, or the negative five rather, is not part of the solution. And X has to be to the right of negative five. That's funny because, you know, looking at this picture, X is on the left, but that's not what I'm reading. I'm reading this symbol. The opening means to the right. The, these, this point means to the left. So, and there are again, two ways to read it. You can read the negative five should be on the left of the X or the X has to be on the right, on the right of the negative five. And because in, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, there, there is a number line, there it is. And I'm pic picturing the negative five fixed and it is fixed somewhere, okay? And the X is the one that is a variable. That's why I, I prefer to think that X is to the right of negative five. And then I'm thinking, oh, so it's all of this, all right. And there's no equal, which means we're playing football. So that means we, we have negative five, not part of the boundary. So we, we, if we step up negative five, that we're out, you know? 
as opposed to, in this case, if we step on a, a negative five, we're in still, we're good. We keep playing the game. But here, we're out to infinity because we want all the numbers that are to the right. So there is, a, <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm just getting excited with what I'm gonna say. Um, over the years, over the decades, you know, I see students over and over again who, who are perfectly capable of doing mathematics. I, there's no doubt in my mind they, they can do mathematics perfectly well. And um, the only thing that is missing is, is uh, information. You know, they don't have the information. And, and in order to acquire and to keep the information, we need to practice it. We need, we need to practice it. Otherwise, we, we lose the information. So, um, yeah, if we, don't, if, we, if, if we don't go over it, we, we don't check it, um, uh, then we lose the information. And that's what that happens all the time. Um, but this is information we want to preserve. We want to keep it. Um, this is important information. It's, it's all, it is almost as reading. We got, reading requires us to, to remember uh, tons and tons of information, you know, what the words mean, how do you pronounce them, and so forth. So math is the same way. You, when you need it, you need it fast. You don't need to start thinking too long. I mean, you could, but then it's, the process slows down too much. Um, so, so we really want to practice this. What came to my mind when, when I was thinking about uh, retaining information is uh, passwords. There are so many passwords and now we have to make them so complicated. Uh, um, it's not easy. It's not easy to, to keep track of all the passwords. In fact, I, I almost can't keep track of all my passwords. I, I just remember I, I set up one two weeks ago and I totally forgot what it is. Anyway, um, we have what is called double inequalities. Okay, so we're gonna start examples of double inequalities. Uh, let's start with something, something simple. Let's say we have seven is less than five minus X, which is less than 13. Okay, that is a, standard easy double inequality. So the seven must be less than this quantity, which at the same time has to be less than this number. So both inequalities have to be met together at the same time, um, simultaneously. So hmm, let's get rid of the five to, to try to isolate the X. So we subtract five across the inequality, the double inequality. So take away five, seven minus five, two, less than, no five anymore, less than, take away five, eight. Now we want to get rid of this negative and we do that by multiplying by negative one or divide by negative one, same thing. So multiply by negative one and we end up with negative two, when we multiply that, we, we end up with a double negative. So this is X and negative eight. But yes, you know what's going on. We gotta reverse the direction. So pointing to the left is less than, pointing to the right is greater than. We read it as greater. So this number has to be greater than X, which has to be also greater than negative eight. Okay. And in, in, in both sides, we are playing football. The, the boundary is out. Uh, boundary means that we are not in the set. Okay. Um, now we have to put this in, in the correct perspective. Uh, the pointy part means to the left of, so negative eight is to the left of X, which in turn is to the left of negative two. So we put the negative eight on the far left, negative two on the far right, X rep is represented by the numbers in this interval. And we use round parentheses because there is no equal symbol, which means we're playing football. So round parentheses means football, square parentheses means um, tennis. 
and I don't I don't know how to to remember that necessarily. Okay, now we're we're gonna get into more complicated double inequalities. These are I have to admit they are a doozy. Okay, so comp more complicated. Uh, double inequalities. Okay, um, so let's do an example here. Seven, example seven. I was looking up at the number seven. Five uh, x minus one is less than seven x minus three, which is less than nine x minus nine rather minus four. Okay, there are x's everywhere. Compare that to the inequality we just finished. There's only one x, so that is relatively easy to work with around. Uh, take, take care of the constant, take care of the coefficient, and boom, we're done. And then it is a matter of reading this correctly. When we have x's all over the place, Unless they work just right, it's my, my advice is to split this into two problems, okay? So we're gonna do that. We're gonna split this into two problems. On one hand, so split. On one hand, we have five X minus one is less than seven X minus three. On the other hand, we're gonna have seven X minus three is less than nine X minus four. Okay, and let's, let's do them independently. Uh, so forget about that for a moment and start working this out. 2x, because we subtract 5x, so I can see 2x. And then if you don't mind me doing this on the video, I'm going to add three at once. So not only am I going to subtract 5x from the 7x to get 2x, we're going to add three. So we're going to do two steps. That is that is daring, but um, hey, why, why not? We can, we can do that. So, so subtract 5x from 7x, we get 2x, 7 minus 5 is 2. Add, while we are doing that, we're going to add 3 on both sides of the inequality. So negative 1 plus 3 is positive 2. Then we can divide by 2. I was going to say by one, but one was already the answer. Two divided by two is going to be give us one. So X has to be greater than one. Okay, let that rest for a moment and let's attack this other side, this other inequality, which branched off from this big double inequality. All right, uh, we do the same kind of thing. Seven uh, X, and 9x, we can subtract 7x from both sides of the equation, 2x. Yep. And that is uh, greater than, this is greater than, uh, I'm reading it backwards. Uh, and we're going to do the same kind of thing as we did over here. We're going to do two steps in one. It's kind of like, I don't know, um, kind of like walking and, and doing something else um, at the same time. So we got 2x because we subtracted the 7x from both sides of the inequality, while we're going to add 4 on both sides of the inequality. So negative 3 plus 4 is 1. Yep. We divide by 2 as we did over there. So a half is greater, is less than x. Okay. And now we have to reconcile those two solutions. And there, we, we don't split them, we have to consolidate them. And the consolidation is with and. Okay, so the two things have to happen at the same time. X has to be bigger than one half and X has to be bigger than one. At the same time, now, we may be asking, wait a minute, those are two different, how can they happen at the same time? Well, one is more restrictive than the other. Um, let me give you an analogy. Let's say 
um, let's uh, let's say you got you, you want to keep you, you're a, 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 a younger fellow or, or female it doesn't matter and and you got two parents let's just pretend and and because you could be an adult and, and you, you don't have to, to, to respond to, to your parents. So pretend you are young and you have two parents and you go out and one says, come back by 9 p.m. and the other one says, come back by 10 p.m. Okay, so, so you're coming back at either, so one tells you nine, the other one tells you 10 p.m. How can you keep them both happy? If you want to make sure you, they're both happy, you have to come back by 9 p.m., correct? Which is the more restrictive parent because that parent wants you to come back earlier. And then the other one, of course, is going to be happier automatically because 9 is earlier than 10. All right. So that's the kind of thing that is, that is happening here. We want to keep this inequality happy and we want to keep, while we're also keeping this inequality happy, so let's, let's kind of draw the two, whoops. Uh, so there is one and we wanna be here. So we can be past one. Um, and then this one is a half. So it is prior to one and we wanna be here. And we wanna, we wanna be able to keep both of them happy. In other words, we wanna be able to satisfy these two conditions we want to be past one and past one half. Well, that means that if we're past one, we are going to be for sure past one half. We're going to be here. So this is the more restrictive of the two. So this is the one we keep. So the final answer, and, and we got to get our mind around, you know, we, we got to get wrap our mind around this concept. It is very, very important. The final answer is that x has to be bigger than one because if x is bigger than one then x is certainly bigger than one half if x is bigger than one half then it doesn't necessarily follow that x is bigger than one because x could be three quarters so this this keeps both of them happy that is an important concept which one of the two keeps the other one happy and the this one doesn't all right, but now we, we gotta write this in interval notation. We don't have an equal, so we use parenthesis, one, and we want x to be greater than one. So to the right of one, infinity. I always translate greater than as to the right or to the left, depending on whether we are greater than or, or smaller than. This is a doozy. This is not easy. This is something that I, I think many students uh, would think um, or would all underestimate. Yeah, many students would underestimate this. It is not simple in my opinion. Now, once you get it, you know, it takes a couple of seconds to, to, to realize, oh yeah, I gotta do this or I gotta do that. But in my opinion, it's not easy. Let's do one other example like that. Example eight, um, say you have, three minus two X is less than or equal to five minus four X, uh, less than or equal to six minus six X. So when you have a double inequality, which is not simple, what is a simple double inequality? The one that has a single X. If you got a single X, uh, that was example six. One double inequality, that means two sets of greater than or, or or uh, less than, and, and only one X, that, that keeps them. So even though we have a double inequality, this is a simple double inequality because there's a single X. As soon as there's more than one X, we really want to split the problem into two problems. Uh, three minus two X is less than or equal to five minus four X, Let's finish this up before we start with the other one. What I'm gonna do is add 4x on both sides of the equation. So the 4x is gonna simplify down here and we're gonna end up with 2x. While that happens, we're gonna subtract three 
from both sides of the inequality, less than or equal to uh, 2. So x is less than or equal to 1. Okay, put that in the back burner while we start cooking this guy. Um, 5 minus 4x less than or equal to 6 minus 6x. Okay, let's see. 5 minus 5x, um, rather 5 minus 4x. Hmm. We want to add 6x on both sides of the inequality. So when we add 6x, we end up with 2x over here. While that happens, we're going to subtract 5 from both sides of the inequality. So 6 minus 5 is 1. So that means that x has to be less than or equal to 1 half. So we got two conditions. Um, two conditions. And we want to keep the two conditions happy. So on one hand, x has to be less than 1. On the other hand, x has to. And, and one, one person could say, or somebody could say, well, there is the 1 and the 1 half. Should we just pick the 1 as we did in example 7? Um, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, let's see. Um, but let's, let's see why. So we want to be at 1 or before 1. Over here, we want to be at one half, which is to the left, or before. So we want to make sure we satisfy both, that those things will, the two of them will happen. See, we have to pick one half, because if we pick one, there's going to be a gap where this guy will be happy, but this one won't be happy. And we want to keep both happy. So happy, 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 happy. The correct word to use is satisfied. We got to keep the two inequalities satisfied. But here, we're not going to be satisfied. This one will be satisfied, but this one won't be satisfied. So to keep both satisfied, we got to be to the left of one half. So the final answer is that x has to be less than or equal to one half, which translates into interval notation as negative infinity, comma, one half bracket. And you may be thinking, oh, this is crazy. I thought it was going to be one. Let me come up with another anal analogy. See, this is coming back on time. This is the analogy I gave you kind of. You know, one person says, come back at 9. The other one says, come back at 10. You want to keep both happy. You're going to come back by, by 9, by this earlier one. And I'm trying to come up with an analogy for this. Let's pretend I, I you know, I, I tell one of my roommates, I don't have roommates, I have a, a wife, but let's pretend I, 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 I was in, in, a, in an apartment with roommates. And I tell one of my roommates, wake me up, you know, at not earlier than, than 10. Yeah, so this is the other way. Don't wake me up before 10. Pretend that it's a 10, that is a one, but pretend that it was a 10. And then I tell the other roommate, oh, but I gotta do something in the morning, you know, so, so don't wake me up earlier than nine. So I told one roommate, not earlier than, than 10, and I told the other roommate, not earlier than nine. Or maybe I told them the other way around, you know, first I told one roommate, don't wake me up earlier than nine in the morning. And then I stayed playing video games or something like that. And then I realized I needed to sleep more. So I told the other roommate, because the other one was already sleeping, you know, pretend I had two roommates. I told the other roommate, well, don't wake me up earlier than 10. So in the morning, one says, hey, he, he said, wake me up by, you know, not later than, not sooner than nine. And the other one says, well, but, but he told me not to wake him up, not sooner than 10 in the morning. So how do we keep them both happy? You know, how do we satisfy the two? Well, if, if I am woken up at 10 in the morning, that's going to keep both of them happy. So you got to watch out. I mean, that was probably one of the silliest examples I have ever come up with. But 
you gotta watch out. It's the two ends of the spectrum. Where's the example? Oh, there it is. Yeah. This is this is past. This is to the right versus on the left. Yeah. So, oh, my other analogy of the arrows is probably a good one too. So here we are satisfying both of these conditions, but over here there is a gap where only one gets satisfaction, the other one doesn't. And we want to avoid that. So we want to be uh, we want to keep the two of them happy. And that happens past one. Yep. Yep. In that case, and this happens to the left of one half, including one half, because we have this other guy. All right. So that is inequalities. Let's move on to equations with absolute value. Okay, so equations with absolute value. Absolute value is similar to the principal square root. It has to be positive. The output of the absolute value has to be positive. Yeah, but the input could be positive or could be negative. Either way is fine. So there's two possibilities. It is a little bit like this, the, the square root, uh, when we are solving an equation, we can have positive or negative, except that the absolute value doesn't actually do the square root. Let's just do a bunch of examples. And let's start with very, very simple examples. Example nine, okay. Absolute value of X equals seven. Okay, so we want to be able to find all the possible numbers so the absolute value of those numbers is seven. Well, one possibility is that X equals seven and the other possibility is that X is negative seven. So there are typically two solutions. Not always, but typically two solutions. Yeah. The, why? Because the absolute value of negative seven is positive seven. The absolute value clears up the negative from within the X. Yep, that's what it does. Okay, example, that was a super easy example. Uh, and pretty much all the absolute value equations are gonna be that way. Wait though, the inequalities get more complicated. So let's say you have X minus two equals seven. Whoa, watch out because we start out the same way. X minus two is seven. Whoa, that's a two. Um, and X minus two is negative seven. But then we have to solve each one of those equations. So the first step is to clear off the, the absolute value. And that causes us to have two problems, two problems. These are, this, these are super easy problems. These are not as easy, but still easy. So we add two. Yeah, watch out because sometimes students say, Oh, so the answer is nine and negative nine. No, 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 no. Um, you know what? I'm gonna write this down as X minus two equals seven and X minus two equals negative seven um, horizontal instead of down. Because now I'm gonna work with each one of those individually. So add two to both sides of the equation. And of course, seven plus two is nine. X equals nine. Now, don't jump to the conclusion that, oh, the other answer is negative nine. I can see that happening because th this is negative seven. And when we add two to negative seven, we don't end up with negative nine. Think about it. We are at negative seven and then we go towards zero by adding two. Adding two means going to the right. So that means that X is um, negative five. And that is tricky. I see students uh, tripping over that. They get the nine correctly. They don't get uh, the negative five correctly. They, they think because they got seven and negative seven, they should get nine and negative nine. No, 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 no. What happens is that this problem is centered at two. When we subtract two, we are shifting. So shifting the other way. So we are centered at two, and then we're going to be away from two, seven units to the right and seven units to the left. 
So from two, seven to the right is nine, seven to the left is negative five. This problem is centered at zero. So seven units to the right is seven, seven units to the left is negative seven, but this problem is centered somewhere else. Example 11. Let's say we have x minus two over three absolute value equals seven. I like to, to keep things when I'm going moving from one problem to another, uh, some things the same while changing things little by little, uh, because then we can grow into the bigger problems little by little. So the thing with absolute value is that we can take the absolute value and split it up when we have a fraction, absolute value of three equals seven, but we know that absolute value of three is really three. So absolute value of x minus two over three equals seven, and now we can multiply both sides of this equation by three. So we're gonna continue. I'm gonna make a division here, and we're gonna continue inside this box now. Multiply by three. Oh, actually we can do that down here. There's enough room. Absolute value of x minus two is equal to 21. So this problem is similar to that one, except that instead of having seven, now we got 21. So that splits into two equations. On one hand, x minus two equals 21. So straight out, this is already 21. Or this quantity is negative 21. And when we take the absolute value, we do end up with positive 21. And we have to embrace all the possibilities. So that's one. And the other one is that x minus two equals negative 21. And now we got to solve each one of those individually. Add two, so x equals 23. What is the wrong answer to say here? That x is equal to negative 23, of course. That would be wrong, because this is already negative 21, so that is to the left of zero. When we add two, we're moving towards the zero. So that means we have to end up with um, negative 19. x equals negative 19. And those are our two solutions. Watch out. 12. How about x plus 2 instead? Absolute value equals um, 7. Well, same difference. x plus 2 equals 7. x plus 2 equals negative 7. Solve each one of those individually. Once we get an answer, don't jump to the conclusion that the other answer is the same, but with the opposite sign. Uh, so subtract two, instead of adding two, we get five. And over here, we subtract two, but we already have a negative seven, so negative seven is on the left. Subtracting two means going farther on the left, so now we got a negative nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Practice. There are some twisted problems, 13, such as, uh, 2x plus 5 absolute value equals um, absolute value of, I don't know, uh, let's keep things fairly simple, x minus uh, 12. All right, now let's think about this. If this is positive, so there are two, there are four possibilities. This is positive and this is positive. So 2x plus 5 equals x minus 12. If everything is positive, then we just clear off the absolute values. Or this is positive and the inside is negative. So in order for that to become positive, we have to put a negative in it. So this is getting long. I, I just want to make sure I, I don't mix this with the other one. So we have 2x plus 5 equals uh, negative of x minus 12. Because if this was negative, adding or imposing um, another negative will cause 
this quantity with the negative to be positive, which is what we want, we would want. Um, now, if this is positive and this is negative, we would have the negative here and no negative there, but that is equivalent to this. And if both were negative, we would have negative or negative, but that is equivalent to this. So the bottom line is this. Originally, there are four possibilities, but they actually boil down to only two, just like in the previous problems. Either make them both equal to each other or make this one equal to the opposite of the other one. And that's it. And it doesn't matter which one you make positive. Now, watch out because we have to have parentheses. If we don't have parentheses, uh, then the, the negative will be only a, working on the x, not on the 12. Anyway, once we get to that stage, solving the, the equations is actually pretty straightforward. You know, subtract x, so we get x. Uh, subtract 5 from both sides of the equation, so we get negative 17. Um, oh, here I'm going to do one more step because I want to um, distribute the negative to make sure I'm not making a mistake. Uh, negative x plus 12. Sometimes it's good to do that uh, because I, I don't mind doing things in our mind. As long as, as they're not too complicated, otherwise we have to write them down to keep track of what's going on. So move the x over here, 3x. Uh, and by the way, that is abuse of language. We're, we're not moving it physically. We're adding x to both sides of the equation. And that causes the 2x to become 3x because we're adding an x to 2x. So that's 3x equals, and then 12 minus 5 is 7. So that means x equals 7 over 3. Yeah, so we could easily make the mistake of thinking, oh, we got negative 17, and consequently the other one should be positive 17. No way. We got two solutions, negative 17 and positive 7 over 3. And there is little comparing uh, when we look at those two. There, there, it, it's hard to come up with this from that or no, no. Uh, we really have to work this out. There is a lot of little rules to remember. You know, a lot of, and, and the only way to get good at all of this is to practice, practice. Um, wait, that's example 13. Okay. Now let's move on to a inequalities involving absolute value or absolute value inequalities. Oh, I just remember one example I forgot to mention back here. Good thing there is still some room here. So let's make a division there. Okay, so example 14. Absolute value of x minus two equals negative seven. Yeah, I almost forgot this example. Yeah, important example. So we mentioned that the absolute value of something has to be positive. The absolute value of something has to be positive. It is impossible, it will never happen that the absolute value of something is negative something, not even with complex numbers. Yeah, this just of, of the bat, just by looking at this, I can, I can tell, nope, there's no way this is gonna work. This is, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to come up with an analogy, but I can't. This is, this is a, uh, what would be an analogy? Yeah, it, it's like having a, a, a poker, poker hand of uh, five aces. Yeah, that's never gonna happen. Somebody's cheating if, if you got five aces in a, in a poker hand. <laughs> this, is, this is not gonna happen. So the absolute value of something may never, ever, ever be negative. So right off the bat, this is, there is no solution. No solution, not even with complex numbers. Not even with complex numbers. All right, yeah. Um, you know, as, a, as an analogy, if, if you got the square root of x minus two, I don't want to confuse you. This is a completely different problem, by the way. Equals negative seven. 
again, that has no solutions. Within the real numbers, within complex numbers, yes, this will have a solution within complex numbers, but not with, within real numbers. This is just an analogy. I'm not trying to tell you those two are the same problem. They behave similarly in this, in this kind of situation because this is the principal root, which means the positive of the two possible roots. And so it cannot be negative unless we're dealing with, um, even with complex numbers, I'm thinking is the, I have to think about that, is the square root of a complex number negative seven, um, yes, neg no, negative seven, the square root. I have to think about that and come back with an answer. Can this, even with complex numbers, can that be true? I have to check, I have to think about that. All right, so inequalities with absolute values. Let's start with easy ones. Absolute value of x is less than five. Let's, let's write down four easy ones and then go from there. 16, 17, 18. Absolute value of x is less than or equal to five. Absolute value of x is greater than five absolute value of x is greater than or equal to phi. So those are the very, very basic kinds of inequalities you're gonna see with absolute value. Those are the basic ones. You have to know those four for sure. So that means that the number, now absolute value can be thought of as the distance to zero. Yeah, um, think of absolute value of x as absolute value of x minus zero, which means the distance from zero or to zero. See, if you have two numbers such as 10 and seven, if you subtract, you get uh, three, which is the distance between 10 and seven. But if you do absolute value of seven minus 10, you still get positive three. So, so this num when we subtract two within an absolute value, we get the pure distance between the two numbers we're subtracting. Now, when we have just x, there's no other number to subtract except that we think of zero as the other number. So we really have the distance to zero. Literally, there's a number line, zero. And if x is there, we mean that distance, whether it is on the right side of the zero or on the left side of the zero, the absolute value is, that distance from zero to x or from negative x to zero, that is the absolute value. So if we want the distance to zero to be less than five, well, let's draw a quick picture here. Zero, that means that we cannot go past five on the right and on the left. So the solution is gonna be the interval from negative five to five open because we cannot even get to five. Yeah, there's no equal. For this guy, it is almost the same, except that we have square brackets. Okay, so when we say that the absolute value of x is um, less than five, it, again, I'm trying to come up with analogies and my analogies, we, some of them are really, really off the wall, really, really dumb or silly, but I'm gonna risk it. Um, so let's, let's pretend you got a, a pet and you tie the pet with a rope and the rope is five feet long, so the pet cannot go past five. Now, the only difference is that here, there's a little bit of extra space so we can actually get to five, but here we cannot get to five. So, yeah. Again, that's probably a bad analogy, but I'm trying to come up with ideas that we can link to this mathematical symbols because just dry symbols like that sometimes are difficult to, 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 to keep. This is the other way around. Pretend there's a fence, a round fence, and you, can, you cannot go in, inside the fence. You have to stay outside. So 
this is equivalent to saying that all the numbers, if x is greater, if the absolute value of x is greater than five, that means that we're looking at all the numbers that are away from zero by at least five units or by more than five units. So we go from negative infinity to negative five, boy, union from five to infinity. Let me show you the picture of that. It's the opposite of this. We wanna be within five of zero. So pretend you got a rope and you got a pet and the, the pet cannot run farther than that. And this situation is the other way. Pretend you're here and then you got a, a, a fence or a shield yeah, at five and negative five and then your pet has to stay outside. You, know, you wanna keep whatever outside of this. So we go from negative infinity to negative five or from five to infinity. Now you may be thinking, wait a minute, he put a square there and, and then round there. Um, technically that is correct because this is the set that we want to be not in. So the one that we're in is the one outside. And in the one that we're in, the boundary is counted. So the other one, the boundary doesn't count. It's a little complicated, but, um, but yeah, we're do, we are drawing the complement of this set. Anyway, the thing to remember is if you don't see an equal, then we are playing a football, which means we gotta use those round parentheses. If we have an equal, then we use uh, the bracket because it's like playing tennis and the boundary is part of the field. In football, the boundary is not part of the field. Negative infinity to negative five, very important, close parentheses, brackets, union, I'm, I'm running out of space here. I can try to squeeze it, five comma infinity. There we go. So please remember those four. Those are the key. Yep. 19. And then it gets a little more complicated from that, but not too complicated. Fortunately, not too bad. So we can have absolute value of three X minus five is less than or equal to 17, for instance. Not a very good problem because there's gonna be fractions, I believe, but that's all right. Um, okay. Um, let me back up a little bit because uh, there's, an, there's a, something I forgot to mention too about these four examples. Let me redraw these four examples again. 15 again. Yeah. Um, if, if we have X by itself, absolute value of X is less than five. Yeah. There's another way to interpret this. We can unfold, this is sort of an unfolded inequality, double inequality, why? Because the X could be positive or the X could be negative. And, and we want to keep it within, within five units. So the way to keep it within five units is to unfold it into a double inequality like this. Yeah, so if we have an absolute value less than a positive number, unfold the inequality this way and then move on. 16 was the, so I'm redoing the, the examples we did earlier, just a couple minutes ago, but I'm gonna explain them a little differently. X is less than or equal to five. Unfold that into two inequalities, into a double inequality, negative five, less than or equal to X, less than or equal to five. So X can only go up to five or negative five. We got a, a rope and we cannot go farther than that. 17, absolute value of X is greater than five. This unfolds, yes, but it does unfold into two separate inequalities. On one hand, X has to be less than negative five. On the other hand, X has to be greater than positive five. 
Uh, sometimes it may help visually if we put the five first, it has to be less than X. So this is, yeah, this is probably a little better. So X is on the left of the negative five and X is on the right of the positive five. And then let's write down the inequalities again. The inequality for this from negative infinity, rather from negative five to five, inequality for that is from negative five to five. And here, those two inequalities cannot be consolidated into one. We have to keep them separate because they don't have any, um, that's not the reason, because we are looking at two possibilities. Either X is less than negative five or X is greater than five. In this case, we say that X, oh, I'm sorry, not that. I'm just changing that into an inequality. So negative infinity, negative five, open union five to infinity. And the only difference between 17 and 18 is that we have an equal sign with a five. So this splits into two inequalities. Um, X is less than or equal to negative five, or we're using or because that goes with union five, is less than or equal to x. So we go from negative infinity to negative five, including the five, union from five to infinity. All right, let's do the examples, the, the example 19 that I was about to start. Okay. So Remember the four cases, that's the key. If you remember your four cases, you're golden. Otherwise, you gotta go back and look it up and see what case we're talking about. Okay, so this is the case when we unfold into one double inequality, one simple double inequality. So we have negative 17 less than or equal to three X minus five less than or equal to 17. And then we solve this inequality. And we, we know how to solve it. Add five across the entire inequality. That plus five is negative 12. That plus five is three X. That plus five is 22. Divide by three, okay. Negative four less than or equal to X less than or equal to 22 over three. What is the a interval notation? We're pretty much done. This is the answer, except that we, I'm gonna ask you to write this with interval notation. So bracket, because we have tennis, negative four, 22 over three, bracket, and that's it, we're all set. So the key is to know whether we're gonna unfold that or not as a single, rather, as a double simple inequality. Compare that with example 20. Say we have that the absolute value of two X plus nine is greater than or just greater than to make, to, to change things a little bit than seven. Okay, so remember, if the absolute value is greater, that means that we are putting a fence around us and we wanna, we want the variables to be away from us by seven units. And assuming we are on a road, there's two ways you can keep them away, on the left or on the right. So 2x plus nine less than negative seven is the way to keep these variables. It's, it's, this is the only variable really, but we can think of the whole thing as a variable. That variable away from us, on the left. Or the other way to keep them away is to have them pass the seven, two X plus nine. Okay. And then we solve each one of those inequalities individually, and we should end up with separate inequalities. Um, if all of this, all of this video looks confusing, that's a good sign. That means that 
that we are appreciating that this is difficult, that there, there's complexities, nuances to this, that the word I would use is nuances. There's a lot of little details. If this, then do that. If this other thing, then this, you know, it's math, algebra is full of nuances. And the whole point is to know exactly how to, when to, to use this or that. And then again, there's, if this happens, then do that. But if this other thing happens, then see, for instance, right here, we got a less than or equal, not equal. That changes the answer somewhat. This one has the absolute value with a pointy thing on the, on the absolute value. This one has the opening on the absolute value. That changes the situation. But that's the whole point. We gotta know how to handle that. So if this is the case, keep it all together. That case, separate them. Whoa, and, and, and then, the, yeah. And then we have the equations and the inequalities. Yeah, there, this video is packed with a lot of things that are complicated. But that's the way math is. Anyhow, um, the ideas we are trying to, to learn, we're gonna subtract nine. Uh, I'm talking while I'm doing math, which can be dangerous. So the ideas that we are trying to, to learn are actually difficult. They're not easy. Um, yeah, so divide by two, negative eight. Yeah, what we are learning is, is, uh, is difficult. Subtract nine, so we got a negative two, and then divide by two, negative one is less than x. All right, so now we, we are pretty good, sitting good. Uh, on one hand, we got negative infinity, negative eight, that looks funny because the infinity kind of looks like an eight, but sideways, and then, we are playing tennis, so we keep close. The boundary is in. Union. Um, wait a minute, why did I put an equal there? There was no equal there, that's a mistake. Whoa, because I was looking at that and then I thought, wait a minute, how come he, no, 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 no. That's a big, see, that's what I get by talking about something that is not the math that I'm working on there. Okay, yeah, because all of the sudden I went from here to here, no equal, and then why would I put an equal there? Well, of course, because I got distracted there. So we're playing football. Union, okay, so the variable has to be past negative one. So infinity, yep. And if your infinity doesn't come out very well, uh, just put two little circles touching each other. You know, and that looks like an infinity. Um, instead of trying to do the eight sideways, you can just do two little circles. That looks pretty good anyway. Um, so practice, 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 practice. If this doesn't look easy, um, that's, that's not necessarily a bad thing. That's a good thing. That means that we are learning we're encountering something difficult that we are trying to master. And that's how it works. Initially, hey, I, I have no idea how it works. And then little by little, we make progress. And the thing is to, to stay with that. You know, uh, if you start learning any instrument, you, you, students who know about instruments, sports, they know it takes day after day after day of practice and then you get injured or sometimes you, you, you go down in your instrument performance and then you pick it up and then it gets better. The, the more things you have mastered within reason, you know, you don't have to be an expert, but the more things you have gone through, through the easier it is to think, okay, this, I've been here before. I know I'm struggling. This is just going to get better because I'm going to practice. I'm going to put my time into it. I'm going to get confused, but then things are going to get better. After, you know, after the confusion, clarity comes. Yeah. yeah. All right. With this, we're going to stop this video.